So thanks for everyone for coming this afternoon. My name is Marc Leopold. I'm a fisheries scientist working at the French Research Institute for Development, known as IAD. And I will, uh, will co-chair this uh, session with um, my colleague Alexandre Leoville, based in uh, La Réunion, working in a consulting firm named OSA Consult. So this session will be about a uh, uh, core crop project that is an action research project conducted in Madagascar on mud crab fisheries. And we start from that case study to see what would be the lesson uh, learned and uh, applicable in other small scale fisheries uh, context. So today we have uh, four other speakers. Uh, two of them are uh, scientists, two of them are non-scientists. First, uh, Vivian uh, Zivan Express from, uh, from well, all of them are from Madagascar, who is um, an independent processor based in Tulia, and also the general secretary of the National Network of Women in Small Scale Fisheries in Madagascar, called Renafet Mada. And uh, Danny Rajanorison, who is responsible for the supply of seafood uh, in a company based in Tulia named Copefrito. And the others are researchers based uh, for Tamal Mafin, uh, based in the University of Tulia, Southwest Madagascar, lecturer in fisheries, and uh, Thierry Razanakut, who is a social economist based in the, at the University of Antinarif. The plan was to start directly with a small introduction um, on the framework and everything, but I guess maybe some people will arrive late, so we'll start with a short video, 10 minute video presenting the overall context. So we'll give you the, the, the broad picture of the work and then we'll start uh, the more academic part, I would say, of the, of the presentation. Yes, let me stand your next screen. Yeah. So the video is in local language, but with English subtitle. I'm sorry for the French speaking. All of, all of them are Malagasy speaking, so it's okay. La filière crâne, euh, il existe plusieurs problématiques euh, au niveau de la taille. Euh, certains pêcheurs, on appelle ça les pêcheurs, euh, passent en dessous des 11 cm imposés par, euh, par les textes. Euh, pourtant, euh, ces 11 cm, je ne dis pas qu'ils sont discutables, mais il faut plus euh, informer et éduquer les, les pêcheurs. Parce qu'ils vont voir un crabe. Euh, pour eux, voilà, ce sont des produits qu'ils récupèrent directement pour pouvoir les vendre. Mais ils ne savent pas, en fait, tout l'enjeu en fait, d'attendre que ce crabe grandisse et pourquoi. Donc, c'est vraiment, je pense, un problème d'éducation et d'information, essentiellement à la base. Jerry, 
Yeah, so this video just uh, give you a bit of uh, an idea of the kind of problems that uh, the suspicious and all the, the, the people of the value chain uh, have faced in the, in the recent years. But as an introduction, I would like to uh, make a few comments about the, the conceptual framework of that, of that work as action research. Okay. Action research about both action and research. So this, uh, this project, this study was based on a, on a paper that was published three years ago with some colleagues, Anthony Charles from uh, Canada and uh, Olivier Thibault from, uh, from France. Uh, and in, in, this, in, this, uh, in this study, we, we considered action research as an external intervention to the system. And this intervention, uh, that's on the, on the, on the left hand graph. Uh, impact the fishery through what they call uh, mediators uh, in the paper, Stan and uh, you know, Ostrom and Ali in the paper in 2002, uh, which are social factors, including governance factors, such as uh, learning, uh, enforcement, uh, instrumental uh, tools as well. And those fact social factors uh, eventually uh, impact the, the fishery itself in terms of biomass incomes. Uh, and so on, depending on 
contingencies, which means um, the contextual factors in terms of culture, market, politics, and, uh, and uh, everything. And what we've shown in, the, in, the, in this paper is that actual research activities uh, can uh, change and shape the, the governance processes, uh, including uh, those I've just mentioned about learning, uh, uh, active strategies, and, and so on. And uh, so typically, as I've explained in the, in the, in the video, action research uh, typically uh, works through uh, what we call uh, loops uh, of different, composed of different steps that are just, and we just uh, present a bit later. And so we repeat those loops uh, like during the, during the projects. Uh, and we do the, we've done that at the local level, so at the community level. And it, it worked quite well with groups of short duration, so less than one year. And uh, but the, the issue that we, we, we faced in, the, in, in exactly Madagascar was to upscale that. How to take into consideration all the transaction costs for setting up such uh, innovation, institutional innovation in larger systems than in communities. So the, typically, uh, we usually design management plans at national level uh, through like using expert-based knowledge only or possibly through stakeholder consultation. So we draft those plans. That would be the main, I mean, the two first uh, phase uh, steps of, of a, a typical action research tools in terms of diagnosis of the problems and planning for actions. But what were, what were the, the, other, the other steps like in terms of action and evaluation of the effects of the, of the actions that would be required to develop those governance processes I've just mentioned before. And there is very little, limited literature, empirical literature on how to do that at national level. So that's why uh, we addressed that issue following an intuitive approach in Madagascar, taking the value chain as um, an example. And this is quite a complex case study. Uh, given that export fishery uh, is, is quite large, as you can see, so it extends over 1,500 kilometers, about 8,000 fishes, several thousands of uh, metric tons a year, several million dollar, uh, dollars a year as well, with uh, weak capacity in terms of, uh, of, uh, of uh, research in fisheries. Yesterday, uh, Honorable Minister mentioned uh, the problems of, uh, of governance in the, in the fishery sector. So uh, if I quote his, uh, his sense, he, he mentioned the, the corruption in that, which is quite, I mean, uh, common in many parts of the, of the world, even in Europe, of course. We got very limited data, and overall, there was the, the fishery, the value chain was in crisis uh, in 2014, following the opening of the, the live market to Asia, which, like you can see on the graph, um, led to a, a steep increase of, on, on, on catches and fishing. Uh, so, so within that context, we still got an opportunity window through the, 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 the action of the ministry uh, supported by the, the World Bank funded program named Surfish 2. Uh, and the ministry grant uh, the medical value chain as a top priority sector for the country. So that's why we developed that action research program to match the research needs and to support the, the implementation of that program uh, in, in, in the country. And so we selected the main fishing areas for the five uh, here uh, in the mass. Those, those areas are the intervention areas of the project. So plan was uh, conducted by a three-year or four-year project within the, uh, with national uh, governance of the project activities. And uh, you see on the, on the, on the right this, uh, this graph, so we have the, the five colors, the first color, the color line, representing uh, each of the, of the sites. And in the, you can see they, go, they move together uh, which uh, represents the fact that the plan was to conduct the same approach within each of these zones uh, with the governance at the national level, what we call that the national steering committee, and repeating those loops annually uh, to, to develop those uh, 
social interactions uh, that are mentioned uh, earlier. But, but, but uh, it didn't happen like that. So I go straight to the, to the, to the end of the story, so you can just, uh, you've got something else to do, that you can just leave the workshop, and then we come back, of course, on, on that issue in the same session. Yeah, but it didn't work like that. First of all, uh, we didn't manage to, to set up the, the National Committee, uh, despite all the, the German efforts to, 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 to complement the, 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 the plan of the Ministry of Fisheries. Um, second, it took us uh, three years to, to set just the, the, the action uh, plan of the project, to find the budget and everything, instead of only one year. And so, finally, what we got is that, and, and, and lately, we, uh, the COVID 19, of course, came in in 2020. So, we were forced to downscale okay, the process to each of the intervention areas. And basically, we, that the, the, on the left hand side, you see the, those two loops at the regional level that were conducted within the, the last uh, three years and developing synergies between all those regional action research activities, we were able to complete uh, the first year of the national level uh, action of the, of, the, of the activities. So that's the overall process. And now we go into more details about you know, the actors and the, the, the activities that, that were conducted and come back on that just for a short conclusion at the end of the session. So first of all, um, I, I was video play. Uh, I welcome um, Vivian to tell us about your experience uh, with that project, please. So yeah, I must uh, say that uh, both Vivian and, uh, and Danny accepted to be part of the session provided that they will speak in French. And so we'll make direct translation uh, for you. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I'm Vivian Vivian, an independent manga and processor in Julia. I'm a general secretary of the National Network of the Women in Fisheries in Madagascar, called the United States. Avant de commencer, permettez-moi de vous présenter via le nom de votre vidéo de l'Enapet Magazine. Before I start, let me just say a few words about the, the network, Renafet Mada. Le Renafet Mada, nous, les deux nationales de France de la Sèche, Madagascar, créé en octobre 2018, avec la promotion du ministère de la Sèche et de l'économie bleue à la Sèche. So the network was created four years ago in 2018 uh, with the support of the Ministry for Fisheries in Madagascar. C'est un réseau qui regroupe actuellement 62 associations de femmes pour joindre les secteurs en fait en Madagascar à l'échelle nationale. So the network currently gathers 62 associations throughout the Malagasy coast, uh, associations working in the, in the fishery sector. So, au total, 5,800 membres. So, in total, totaling uh, 5,800 people. Et chaque association regroupe des femmes de l'acteur, des femmes de l'acteur, de marieuses et en collectif, femmes transformatives de produits de mer et des femmes cyclistes. So in each of these associations, uh, the, 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 the members are women uh, involved in fishing, fishing or, uh, or in uh, like fishmongers, uh, fish, collect, fish collection, uh, like in the villages and processing. Notre objectif global est l'amélioration des conditions de vie des femmes dans les communautés de pêcheurs en appuyant sur le, le partage d'expériences utiles de savoir-faire des femmes de chaque région. So the, the, as it's written here, so the objective is to improve the living conditions of the, the women in fishing communities, uh, starting from the sharing of uh, experience sharing uh, across those uh, associations. La recherche de marché pour les femmes. The, the, the search for new markets for fishing for seafood products. La formation des femmes sur la transformation des produits. Training of women for seafood processing. 
Awareness about good practice in fisheries. And contribution and um, assisting those uh, those women for making projects about their own uh, businesses. So if we now start with the, the involvement of the network within that uh, action research project, the network was responsible for the data collection uh, for the whole uh, project. So this data collection was conducted uh, participatively with the participation of uh, fishers, fishmongers, and collectors in the villages. The Renafet Mana network was not used before that to work with researchers, but the, the researchers um, asked you know, the network to, to contribute because of the, of, the, of the action at national level and at the scale of the villages. So the activity started uh, two and a half, two and two year and a half ago. Uh, and overall, the network contracted uh, 14 uh, interviewers, so local uh, community members that, that conducted the, the fishers' interviews, 32 fishmongers, uh, and three uh, local coordinators who were all uh, uh, been funded, contracted by the network. So all this, this data is really at the basis of all the research and all the results that were provided through the project. And after so two years and a half, uh, we can say that it's it, it works. It works, and you got an indicative uh, amount of the of the budget, and then it's. Which we have presented, but just allow, please allow me to mention that. <laughs> so the, the, the responsibility is to ensure that the, the data are of good quality uh, for research use. So they monitor how the, the, the local, I mean, community members actually work and collect data in the, in the field. So the I think that was that idea of precedent. Precedent. Yeah. So that's that's the kind of data uh, that uh, they, they they each of the, of these people collect uh, in the field. About they wait so the the fish is catch. They make measurements of the of the crops. Uh, they uh, take also the record also the, 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 the which gear uh, were, was used during the fishing trips. Yeah, as well as the fisher census that they repeat every month in all those villages so as to assess the fishing efforts. La collecte de données coûte 2000 euros par mois pour toutes les régions, y compris sa date de placement. So the overall uh, cost for, for that monitoring is about 2000 euros a month, including all the salaries and the field costs. Pour le Renafet Mata, en tant qu'une jeune organisation, le projet correctable est le plus beau financement que les régions ont prévu, avec un montant de 65 000 euros. Uh, the, 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 that project was uh, the, the biggest uh, funding that the RENAFE uh, actually uh, gathered, uh, reminding that it's still a new network yeah, starting in, in, uh, four years ago only, uh, totaling uh, 65,000 euros for that work. It has allowed us to develop the capacity of 
en créant une nouvelle association, en travaillant sur le reporting et sur la décentralisation. Uh, that, that money that, and, and those activities allow the network to uh, create 11 new associations in, in, the, in the areas, as well as developing capacities for um, uh, managing budgets and uh, other administration activities. So that's uh, compared to other uh, to other activities of the network that the project uh, allowed the network to acquire new uh, capacities in uh, on those uh, small scale fisheries. Le renforcement avec le partenaire scientifique en Madagascar et international comme la France et la Réunion. Including uh, strengthening of uh, collaborations with researchers. Désormais plusieurs projets en cours de développement. And so there are ongoing uh, projects that connect to, to that uh, project, including that one, the Fish 2 Sustainability Project funded by the Belmont Forum. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the project is about uh, assessing the contribution of small scale fisheries to the SDG, so sustainable development goals. Like FAO, avec le projet, créer un environnement propice pour assurer la viabilité, la durabilité de la pêche active. And the network also involved in the, the FAO led project in Madagascar about creating an enabling environment for sustainable artisan fisheries in the country. En tant qu'organisation de société publique reconnue en Madagascar dans le système de pêche, la FAO nous a mis parmi les membres de sa CEPA pour l'élaboration et la mise en œuvre du plan d'action nationale de la petite pêche en Madagascar. As a civil uh, society organization, the FAO uh, uh, asked the, 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 the network, the Renafed Mana Network, to be part of their uh, task force. Uh, last year, was last year? I think so, the year? Yeah, starting last year. Uh, to be part of the platform for setting the national action plan for smooth care fisheries in Madagascar. And that's also thanks for all those initiatives that uh, funded a uh, venue here in that conference for the first time you know, of, the, of the network. And uh, to end uh, my intervention, but just to mention that through this uh, project, we in the network uh, gain more uh, knowledge about the medical fisheries in the country. Et une bonne relation avec les sociétés privées et avec les administrations de la pêche en Madagascar et aussi avec les organisations internationales. And also uh, this uh, help to uh, to get uh, some good relationships with fishery administration as well as the uh, private sector. Uh, yeah. Par la suite, les réseaux sont très utiles de continuer la collaboration avec les chercheurs. So the network will uh, welcome any new initiatives coming from the researchers, uh, maybe to address similar problems in other value chains in, the, in Madagascar. Or any other organization, uh, organization's project uh, that would Uh, work with community uh, for sustaining the smoker fisheries in uh, in Madagascar. Thanks for this meeting. So I don't have. <laughs> We will directly move on to the next speaker, uh, Danny, and then we'll break for one or two questions uh, on that before we'll uh, start the more uh, academic presentations. Uh, probably a bit more, not boring, but a bit more. Thank 
Chris, non, non. Oui, ça c'est mon tour maintenant. Bonsoir à tous. Je parle plus fort. Je me présente Dani Radonarson, responsable de développement de la collecte à la société Coupé Flipo et puis présidente nationale de la plateforme Sansafa Madagascar. Ah, je viens ici donc pour montrer l'action la entre la société Coupé-Flipot et le Coupé Carabin. Donc, mon thème est intitulé Stratégie de la société côté frito et des organisations de la partie prenante pour la gestion des débuts de pêcherie dans le sud-ouest de Madagascar. Je vais expliquer le côté frito, ces compagnies de pêche rigorifiées de Tulia. C'est une société exportatrice de produits de mer vers l'Union européenne. Le Pétro est une compagnie pour le principe de service gazouille Elle est basée dans la région de Tulia, à Madagascar, depuis 1996, ça fait 26 ans. Elle compte à ces jours. 300 employés avec une production de 1000 tonnes de produits collectés. Avec son modèle d'achat, elle achète directement aux communautés de pêcheurs des poulpes, des calmars, des poissons, des langoustes et des crabes. Elles peuvent assurer le transport, les tri, les préparations et les conditionnements dans les normes européennes. Cette société réalise en parallèle les actions suivantes. Première action, c'est distribution du matériel comme on a vu tout à l'heure, des matériels de pêche pour les crabes et donation des produits de première nécessité au PPN, des matériaux de base. La société a une création de emploi complémentaire pour l'agriculture, l'aquaculture d'algues et pour l'autoriculture, c'est le cisconder en anglais. And the second activity, the second activity is to support creation of complementary activities uh, for fishermen and fishermen for the wife during the closure period, fishing period through agriculture and seeking agriculture. And they working with also aquaculture company like uh, as you can say uh, Indian Ocean Tree Bank and uh, Ocean Farmers Consortium. The troisième action c'est l'application des règles locales de DINA. DINA c'est-à-dire qui protège donc pendant les réserves marines il y a des fermetures nationales de produits il y a des réserves marines aussi donc pour les réserves marines des produits. The third uh, action is to the local rule, like in Madagascar, we have the local rule, like this, you expect, uh, the place, you expect the close period of marine reserve. Et uh, cette action de protection est assurée par les sociétés civiles, sans savoir Madagascar, les ONG, uh, les autorités de pêche, et puis le, le comité de pêcheurs, surtout parce que c'est eux donc qui sont responsables de ce faire. That action is monitoring with uh, civil society like uh, Santa Fe Madagascar, the community, also the NGO, and finally the fishery authority. La quatrième action, c'est j'insiste, c'est la collaboration entre le projet Coré Crabe et la société Copéfi. Four one is collaboration with research projects such as Coré. 
C'est la société qu'on fait plutôt qui facilite la cheminée. Et c'est donné, c'est ce qu'on a dit avec Didiane tout à l'heure, parce qu'il est donné dans le village et c'est de rien de faire qu'il assure le livraison à la base filiale. The link with the project is to facilitate the routine of fishery monitoring data uh, in collaborator also with the Minister Sanagancia, as we just say in uh, last presentation, uh, to the fishing site to the uh, territory to Korea. Avec les équipes de Korea, ils sont sur le terrain pour assurer, la, pour renforcer la sensibilisation de n'est pas acheté des produits de, de petits crabes. So they are uh, also with the broadcast team on the field as well to sensibilize the community to not fishing the small crabs. On ne dit pas tout à l'heure, on a parlé des groupes de travail. Tout à l'heure, c'est où on rassemble tous les acteurs, les sociétés, les ONG, les comités de pêcheurs, donc pour essayer d'améliorer et de résoudre les problèmes sur le terrain. We also do not forget the existence of working groups of activities to improve all the problems in the field and try with the community to discuss and uh, solve some of the problems. C'est la première fois, donc, il y a une convention entre la société Copé Fibro et le projet Corecrab, c'est-à-dire IRD, Institut de Recherche et de Développement, comme Marc qui est là, et puis l'Institut Alliotique de Recherche Marine, Marine HSM. The other action is the partnership with the collaboration between Copertico, uh, the IHSM, the Marine Institute of Tuyatuya, and IRD to collect data uh, on the side of the car. Via cette situation, quel est l'intérêt de la société Copertico en travaillant avec le projet pour écran? Uh, it is uh, what it interests for Copertico to work with Copertico for now. L'intérêt de Copé Fico, c'est d'avoir la fiabilité de données et pour assurer la gestion de ressources marines. L'intérêt de Copé Fico est d'avoir un strong data pour gérer un autre système qui a été fait par un autre Et surtout, c'est la base scientifique hein, qu'on va voir dans ce détail. Et pour définir aussi la période de fermeture partielle, jusqu'à maintenant, donc, c'est. Il y a des données, mais on essaie donc d'avoir tous les données pour avoir donc des données très très précises pour avoir des systèmes de, 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 de ressources marines. The first uh, need for the data is first of all is properly to define uh, a good choice period for uh, the crab fisheries. Pour mieux, mieux gérer donc le débit crab, c'est ce qu'on a dit. Donc, euh, on a besoin de suivi. Or, euh, l'année prochaine, ce projet collectif va se terminer en mois d'avril. Donc, on préfère de continuer le suivi de cette étape pour avoir la bonne gestion de cette Another big problem uh, is uh, the sort of small craft. So, uh, we are concerned for the monitoring of the small craft in Brazil because We want to continue with the project because uh, normally the project ended up uh, for the next years, but we want to this, that project continue to continue to have this survey in the future. En conclusion, pour ces actions, donc la société Copé Fico, nous pouvons voir donc de valoriser les produits au niveau de, uh, des communautés de pêcheurs et uh, pour la confiance et partage des valeurs de ce produit. In conclusion, through this action, we can speak to promote the model of valorization of the seafood product of the Southwest uh, uh, of Madagascar, value of trust and value and sharing with the fishing community. Uh, grâce à la présence de ce projet, donc, on a des données bien définies et qui favorisent la bonne gestion des ressources marines. With that, uh, with first upgrade, we have now good uh, data. Et si on continue donc à ces projets par d'autres filières comme poulpe, parce que le poulpe, c'est le produit exportable dans la région du sud-est de Madagascar, on aura donc une bonne gestion de cette ressource marine. Et si on continue avec d'autres secteurs, comme le focus, 
which is the first exportable uh, project in software by Yaska. Uh, we are a good governance of our marine resources. Mesdames et Messieurs, je termine mon exposition. Merci. Thank you so much, Dandy, and uh, thank, thank you, Jan, for your efforts, for your contribution. Uh, we, we are already out of time, but still, if you have uh, one question to one of them or both of them, I will welcome them. And then we move on to the scientific presentations. No, everything, yeah, please. Good afternoon. Um, first, firstly, I, I want to share a message. When I was working with a colleagues, such a, someone mentioned that. Such a it's a post. But, uh, <clears throat> I want to acknowledge it and uh, appreciate that some of our countries in Africa are such people who come down to, to us to help the same uh, people to attend such conferences. <laughs> A bitter one. <laughs> How do you put the put you determine the best part that who actually determine it is a kind of because we got a, a specific work on that, including a, a video to promote the system. We just tried several sizes based on what was uh, actually, uh, I done one work 10 years ago in another country where they use uh, traps, but not hoop net. And so we start with them, but the, the, the problem with hoop net is that, as you've seen in the video, the trap has very little time to escape through the, the meshes. So we, we tried three different sizes, 55 mil, 65 mil, and 75 mil, which is as big. So if you show that to a fisher, say no, easy. <laughs> I wouldn't get anything with the next. And, uh, and so we compared the selectivity uh, curves of, of those uh, three, uh, three sizes. And we come in the, the intermediary size of so 65 centimeter would be a good compromise for uh, still retaining legal size traps while uh, uh, allowing the smaller ones below seven or eight centimeters to escape. That's a, that's a compromise that yet now, as we see in the other presentations, we are in the discussion now to implement that in the ground as based on the actual research project. Last question. Uh, I've uh, noticed that you have got uh, times when you Streets in the Americas that work uh, fishing for that species. Um, it, why is it because maybe is the spawning period when these types are maybe having eggs? Or what are the reasons behind? Thank you. Thanks. And uh, the reason behind is more, it's mostly the one I just presented here. It's because of these of this sudden increase in fishing pressure and catches starting in 2014, that the, the, the issue on size limits really uh, become urgent. The, minimum, the first minimum size was set in 2006, uh, 10 centimeter, and in 2014, there was a change in that limits. And, uh, and the closure was another way, an easier way to limit fishing <laughs> efforts at that, uh, at that period, because there was, a, I would say, However, the fishery sector was in crisis to do a very uh, huge you know, amount of efforts deployed very rapidly. 
very quick change, I mean, an increase in fishing effort in only one year. So that's why uh, the, 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 that failure has become uh, what it was uh, established, actually. And there are still discussions on the duration of that period and when which time would be the most appropriate, as we'll see in the later presentation. Thank you. Okay, with that, I think we should move on to the next speaker. Uh, welcome, uh, Mr. Chaval Martin from the University of Julia, University of Portuguese. My niece, Cindy, can I just acknowledge it's so rare to have a company working the way that Concreto is working in the community. So we really appreciate this example. If we have time, we might be able to explore more. It's unusual. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am uh, Jamal Martin uh, from the Fisheries and uh, Marine Science Institute of uh, the University of Australia. Uh, I would like to, to say you at uh, this beginning that uh, I'm very bad in English, but uh, I make uh, much effort to. To, to talk uh, in English during uh, this uh, presentation. Uh, my talk is about the contribution of the action research project to science support management. And uh, let me to present you uh, the Fisheries and uh, Marine Science Institute of mm -hmm. the University of Chile, who is uh, a uh, training and research institute. The main missions are training and research in marine science, in fisheries and aquaculture, and in marine and coastal environments. The institute works in partnership with many national institutions, private sector, community organizations, NGOs, and many international institutions. We have uh, a long-term uh, partnership with many international institutions, and one among these is uh, the uh, Research Institute for the Development. And this project is one among uh, the, 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 the results of this long-term uh, partnership. Uh, the project gives uh, opportunity for young students, for uh, PhD students, and uh, uh, it gives an uh, opportunity for some senior fishery scientists. The project uh, contributes to develop the capacity of the fishery research. Uh, reason why we have uh, a collaborative and participative data collection, uh, uh, related to uh, uh, Madao uh, National Network uh, for Women for Fisheries uh, uh, coordinates uh, this uh, uh, collective, uh, collective data collection. We have uh, created online data storage. Uh, this uh, uh, online data storage uh, has as objective to support uh, Fishing information system of the fishery ministry of the fishery. And uh, uh, many work has, was done in the data processing. Uh, we, we can take, for example, the statistical estimation of the fisheries and vectors, uh, maps, and the using of the uh, Ershani application. Uh, in national level, uh, the project uh, uh, has contributed 
Science policy dialogue between the small cap between Madagascar and uh, uh, was initiated the MOU with environment NGOs and the Ministry of Fisheries for upscaling and coordinating fishery monitoring at regional and national levels. Uh, we have uh, some link with uh, other projects in small scale fishery. And this project contributes to develop uh, the institute's capacity, which, for example, the case of the, the link who was created with the FIU uh, during the IHH uh, study. It's the same case with the link with soy fish with the Ministry of uh, Fish Food. Uh, during this project, uh, uh, many uh, regional working, working groups uh, have done in uh, four intervention regions. The objective are to present certain results, to discuss about the main issue in the region, the region and to identify the priority actions for researchers and partner organizations. Uh, as the film show uh, uh, below, um, uh, during uh, the regional working groups, uh, the fishing community uh, had sort of a study related to uh, the safety of the safety of the big part. The main objective is to improve. The selectivity of the big part of net used in Madagascar by specifying the optimal net. While uh, hot net, because it's one of the main fishing gear used in Madagascar, but uh, is um, uh, uh, has a low selectivity. Uh, after this. Uh, Regional working groups. Uh, the project uh, has invited um, all uh, regional working groups uh, for the, for a meeting in Antapari the last week. Last week, uh, during a national working groups uh, with the, the staff of the, the ministry, and uh, the objective are uh, to present research results to discuss the main fishery problem in the intervention inter 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 regions and to identify the priority action for everyone, for researchers, partner organizations, and the Ministry of Fishery and Go Economy in the next year. Uh, in conclusion, we had learned what Action research is about. Uh, in general, we have uh, good results because uh, uh, we have uh, a stronger research capacity. Now we can give uh, some uh, scientific advice for the management of the, the meat uh, fisheries. And uh, we have conducting uh, and transdisciplinary uh, research. But it is not simple. It is very complicated because much of our need in terms of partnership, in terms of interaction with the Ministry of Fisheries, and for many reasons, we have some, uh, some difficulty to, to, to work, to collaborate with the NGOs, uh, in spite of uh, awareness and uh, many uh, meetings that. Uh, we, we had uh, uh, outcomes depends on non predictable factors and adaptation required to the fishery context and political agenda. Now, uh, the important for us is to secure future outcomes and to continue the process to look at fisheries at the national level. And uh, uh, we think that it's, it's important to extend 
And these two other small sketches in the southwest of Madagascar following the same action research project, the approach, research approach to improve the management of the marine resources. And uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, so it's, it is the case, uh, for example, of uh, octopus fisheries. And uh, why not uh, on the fish uh, fisheries? Uh, I think that uh, it's all. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Jamal, for that. If we have time for one short question, we're completely out of uh, time. I we ask Rosanna for, for delay. Any question? Yeah, please. Can I ask you this question? Um, I think on your presentation, uh, something came up about the economy and the relations to muscle fisheries. I was just curious about any examples of what that entails. Any example of what? Uh, blue economy activities. It came up twice now with applications, but I was just wondering what that entails. Uh, uh, then we have uh, the, the, the minister of the fish. The fish is that quite for me among us today. I think that uh, the most oh, interesting. There's a better position. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much for the question. Well, I'll take two quickly from uh, all of my colleagues. It's, um, it's an important question. Uh, uh, the answer could be a little vague since the question is um, been made to. But I guess we are trying to promote the economy uh, through uh, uh, the, the development of all activities around uh, trees and around aquaculture. Yesterday, for example, I have uh, quoted that example. It's a, the case of um, uh, the, uh, the development of uh, shackles uh, for um, the development of all post harvest uh, activities. Just like um, cold storage, um, um, uh, fish protecting unit, and uh, so on and so forth. So now, regarding the aquaculture, we are now developing uh, sea cucumber farming much farther, and uh, also the case for um, the seaweed farming, and uh, also the, the crab actually. And soon we will be launching project on crab uh, farming in general. So these are how we think. Uh, to develop the blue economy in response to the issues related to livelihoods and issues related to uh, climate change and mainly the oil region. Yeah, but um, in the other hand, when we talk about blue economy, it is very multi-sectorial. So the answers that I have just brought up here are just like the activities around fisheries and aquaculture. But uh, if you're going to talk about tourism, if you're going to talk about renewable energy, if you're going to talk about maritime transport, if you're going to talk about uh, oil and gas. So they are still a lot of many things to do on that. But uh, we are uh, strictly limited in time, so I cannot go much further than that. Thank you so much. Right after this, we, we still have a discussion about Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to uh, complement that, I mean, one of the pillars, of course, of the blue economy is uh, the, the science uh, basis of any decision making. So I think actual research is one of the very few uh, black options we have to really match you know, the, the, the expectations of the different uh, stakeholder groups. And that's yeah, probably one of the overall achievements of this kind of project. Yeah. Please, Mr. Yeah. So, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Thierry Razanakut, uh, lecturer and researcher from uh, CEREP at the University of Antananarif. So, my part is to present uh, some results of our uh, research at uh, IMD, the Market Family Dynamics. Of multicultural value chain and its management in Madagascar. So, as mentioned during the video, we conducted a socio economic study 
in a few in life today, but that are not uh, representative of all of the nature of uh, crab fisheries in Madagascar. And uh, it gives us uh, some ideas of how to understand the fisheries of mud crab in Madagascar. And we found that uh, several members of uh, Oswald are mainly in the uh, are practice uh, crab or fishing crab of, uh, of uh, daily activities. And it's about uh, 80 and 4% uh, of uh, household who practice uh, uh, fishing as main activity. And uh, we learned that the majority of secondary activity revolve around the agriculture in this region, so far as Madagascar. And households who come are impacted by national fisheries closure. So for that, uh, and in addition to that, we conducted a uh, fishery census that uh, allowed us to identify 6,000 fishers um, of mangrove crab fishermen in, in the four states that we really studied in Madagascar. And uh, we studied value chain to understand how it is organized. And it was also important to update the latest of uh, 2012. Uh, I think started by smart fish. Why? Because right after this uh, period, the fishery has undergone a change in, in the beginning of the export of live crabs uh, since 2012, as I say. And uh, an export which is done mainly by aircraft. And uh, since uh, 2013, we have set an increase of uh, of life of, yes, of uh, life crabs exported where frozen crabs production are stable, and this induced an increase in of total production. To defend our investigation, we mobilized mobilized data from multiple sources, such as those from the Department of Fisheries and the blue economy for production and uh, collection permit, uh, custom data for all that concern the export price and uh, volume. And in addition to this, we have so estimated a uh, fraud survey the number of uh, fishermen, new fishermen instability permanently in each villages and also the purchase price. So between 2009 and 2020, we can observe a variation of trends and the uh, value chain origin that was calculated or estimated, like the export value, the production by region, production per region, or in the price per region. And uh, to operate and analyze data, we use statistical model uh, called GLMMM or generalized uh, linear mixed models that using the export price at the proxy of market, market effects on catch and nominal fishing report at a regional level, where lot of Y as the expression of the export price of live and frozen crabs plus zone, plus the export price by zone, and the year is taken as a random effect. So this allows us to support that uh, numbers of uh, collection permit issues significantly impacted by the export uh, price of life and the frozen crabs. And uh, the local purchase price to a fisherman is affected by the export price at the first sale. And the export price of live crab affected the number of new fishermen permanently installed in, in each zone. And surprisingly, 
export price of frozen crab has no effect and a limited effect by purchase price or fishermen. So we can say that export price is a major factor in the dynamism of the sector, numbers of collectors, installation of new fishermen, and out to the catches. So any issues that influence the export market affect fishing imports and production, but differently depending by the regions. So before concluding, before concluding, I like Matt to continue with uh, bioeconomic models. And after that, I... Yeah, very briefly, just a uh, few words about uh, the, the analysis that we've really done in terms of uh, modeling the, 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 those fisheries using the socioeconomic data as well as the, 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 the data on caches and other uh, biological uh, parameters that we took from the literature. Um, as we, we, look, we use that modeling as a way to, to try to, to predict uh, or to estimate what would be the effect of a uh, change, as we said, of the fishing closure or other, uh, or other um, uh, regulations. So first, so you see in the green, the green, uh, the green line here, it's just the, the similar trend in biomass and uh, you could see this large peak that results from the, the closure. So you've got this uh, annual uh, variation that is predicted uh, under current uh, management regulations. And what we've seen is that if we change the, the, the current uh, purchase price uh, based on what we've seen before, uh, eventually we predict that it, well, there would be a little effect on, on the dynamics, on the overall dynamics and decreasing trend of the overall uh, biomass, uh, except of course that, uh, not except, but uh, one the, the, of course the benefits of the fishes will, uh, will increase uh, uh, a bit following that increase price. And you can see that the, the biomass will be a bit lower, given that there will be new fishes attracted to the fishery because of the expected larger benefits of, of that, which is predicted by the statistical model we just uh, talked about. But importantly, uh, we also provided um, results about uh, the effect on, on another regulation that would be, for instance, the, the enforcement of uh, minimum size limits, which is currently it's not enforced at all. And we've seen that the, the blue line, so that was the one I've just shown before, using current regulations, so just a national closure and no enforcement of the legal size limit. And the red line will be the results of um, the, the, the stop in the, 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 I mean, the, the absence of fishing for a very small uh, individual. And you can see that the effect will be much larger than the, the one that we think from a change in uh, fish uh, in, in metcalf versus prices. So, I mean, to conclude, I think, yeah, back. Uh, before continuing, uh, I want to share a little number of that uh, the world value chain is mainly driven by export price of uh, live mud crab. And any increase in the export price of live crabs positively impacts the number of new fishers entering into the fish meat and then increases fishing effort for the following years. They become the permanent fishers in each zone. So, uh, without that, controlling competition among export companies would the law for controlling purchase price and the foreign directly fishing effort. And useful, it is useful in the start context where, where it's not possible to descend all Swiss small fishers, but we have an um, open access uh, sector. And uh, for conclusion, we can say that uh, all of you that we shaped uh, during the national workshops, uh, we discuss about this and uh, we think that uh, applying a modern price increasing is general, but not enough for encouraging a sustainable fishing practice. And we have um, two propositions for action. So to 
introduce a limited access to the live private export market from Madagascar, maybe by quotas, by export company, and to limit impact on the value chain while allowing for a minimal increase in purchase price as required by fishers and the fishmongers during the work, working group kind of uh, national workshop. And uh, to effectively reduce the catch and the sale of a juvenile crab, because we think that uh, it will be more interesting to combine economics and biological measures to reduce the catch of a sense of juvenile crab. So I'm in the time of my discussion. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah, maybe one short question. We just that would be the last presentation before my very, very short conclusion. Yeah, because so, we are very, very late. Uh, so I should move on down. Yes. Quickly, um, I give you a small example of participation study. Uh, and the lead with the restriction we left during the core crab project. So, if there is methodological characteristics, do not crab fishery site in all the sites of the project. Um, for crab, it's uh, well, that bill are focusing on fishery monitoring and the uh, sectorial approach. So, uh, during all of the, the And during the work, uh, the working shop group, uh, people show a real interest to that mapping and facilitation uh, number of you at the local scale. And um, uh, that's mapping uh, be used direct, the, the direct interest for community-based management for mobile data, like a low tools, like a DINA, DINA is uh, like the same thing, uh, local, low, and uh, legal formula like TGRH, it's a total management of fishery recruits and TGRM, it's a total management of natural resources. So, uh, we conjure that study with uh, uh, the turn of uh, the community and the people in the city. And so, what is Participation made making. It's to include different manners of approach in fish in the set and use model, which shows participation making as a dynastic tool of social participation. And it's a collective process for mapping representation uh, by the local community. So uh, the objective is generate information about territory, but it's not included geographic, it's included historical, cultural, social phenomena. So we conduct that study uh, on all of the region of uh, targeting by the project. So two regions in the north and two regions in the southwest of the Madagascar. So we utilize uh, 79 villages. And with all this information, we provide indicators of partition regions like exploited uh, surface per village. It's what they suffer per village per fisherman. And we've combined with all the data that and the fishery data that can estimate also the fishing effort per number sector and uh, also can estimate crab and keeper sector and type of mode. That's an example of mapping we can have. Uh, so we think we can, we can show the reason. You can show the intensity uh, of fishermen uh, in the channel, and all of the red is um, with the number of uh, them, it's a uh, number of mapping. And we can also choose in, um, in a specific area to protect in priority. And so, in another scale, uh, like in the north, uh, we show how the fishery are and the number of exploitation. Here you can see the number of exploitation. Um, 
with one to one the Bishop Perkin who both uh, place thing. So, um, <coughs> so and the question is what we're going to do with all that mapping? Uh, it's only for research and no, so I think it's uh, first of all for the community or for we can work with other uh, study like uh, someone told. Uh, about that uh, in that presentation uh, with the selectivity of Hooknet, uh, we show good results for uh, um, for working on the mesh. So mapping, uh, participating mapping, and mapping with Mongo, we can find precisely where we can conjugate and changing the net, the Hooknet, and changing the mesh. So here we can see it's also in the north the diversity of fishing kind you can find for only for uh, scale of fish and in the north in just in the bay. So um, it's important to know very well where or manage nature, where we have to uh, manage and which village we have to select. Also. Also, example uh, for this technique for the uh, methodology is to identify conflict. So here you have two villages, you know, the villages of Antachana and the other one, Malay. So they are both different fishing sites, but uh, between those, there are um, mutual fishing sites. The villages of Antachana want, with the deal, put a reserve area. But they don't communicate or have an accord um, with Mane. So Mane conserve their fishing site. So there's potentially uh, a conflict, and it's not an efficient number of reserves because you have one uh, of the age uh, respect the rules, and the other one doesn't respect uh, that reason. Uh, we show. That's a good uh, participant making. It's good too, so, but uh, it's necessary to be exhausted in the active fishing village uh, to a really good well defined mangrove area. And uh, we have sense that we have sense if we additional to all the fishery indicator like CPU or the census number, totally number of fishing used in this area. Uh, and also, you have to prepare a significant survey effort to be really exhausted. The example I show you, we uh, survey 80% of the crab village uh, in the north. So like other regions, we have uh, like 40 regions, so it's not enough. For a uh, Thank you for that. Thank you, Alex, and for being very brief and try to just provide some insight of the usefulness of this mapping tool so as to define what is the scale for more uh, like uh, real experimentations, uh, taking the example of the mesh satellite that would be others as well. Uh, I have to go straight to the to my conclusion, uh, and we can continue the discussion later on. So where are we now? Uh, we, as was mentioned by uh, Tamar earlier, we just completed the the, the national workshop with strong uh, top level political support last week in Naribu, making uh, able I mean we're able to gather uh, large groups um, for for synthesizing. Yeah, the outputs um, of all the, the, the regional um, working groups. And uh, finally, what I represented here was the fact that with the, the blue cycle is about the, the three years, the three last years of the research action activities. Allowed us so to complete that, that first national level uh, loop that was uh, just uh, ended by that workshop last week. And meanwhile, we also uh, uh, evaluate, I mean, the progress made during the last few years, but at the same time, uh, 
diagnose again what would be the, the, the main problems at national level to address and make some uh, planning about what would be required to do uh, in priority uh, next year. So just as a quick uh, synthesis here, uh, strengthening, continuing the, the, the cooperative monitoring uh, that would be strengthened by this uh, national um, MOU between the Ministry of Fisheries, NGOs, and research organizations, but also uh, continuing the, the 